What's up you guys, Kenny from Team Moistar here and today we're going to be going over what is currently the set list for Scarlet and Violet. Now of course a lot of these cards are under speculation so 95% of them will make it into the set and the 5% won't. If you like what we do, if you like the content, if you like every little vlog thing, uh, please consider subscribing and liking otherwise your Mr. Beast bars will go missing. So let's go straight to the video. All right, so I know a lot of people do consider me around my area and uh, quite a few of my friends as one of the post-rotation guys. So like when a new set gets released for post-rotation, I just completely drop what I'm doing and start testing it, especially because this is a pretty important set, seeing how this is a mid-season rotation and the first tournament with it legal is going to be EUIC. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not only EUIC, but Portland, Hartford, and a handful of other regionals will be legal for Scarlet and Violet base set. So this is a very important set for a lot of players. Yes, I have already looked at a lot of cards, and I do have thoughts on all, if not most of them. <clears throat> I will be skipping the cards that I do not think will see competitive play, the babies, or... If they have an ability that's interesting, that could be decent in GLC, I'll be looking at it. But um, don't be surprised if I skip over some of them or have some like thoughts about it and just kind of ignore it. Uh, starting out with the Cacturn. <laughs> if this Pokemon is your active spot and it's damaged by your opponent's attacks, you put three damage counters on the attack of Pokemon, three colors, 110. Could be cute in GLC. I don't think it's the best, but 130 in GLC for three is okay. Or 110 for three in GLC is pretty okay. Um, <clears throat> we have Arboliva, Arboliva, Olive, Arboliva, it's probably, it's probably Arboliva. It has an ability where when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you heal all damage from one of your Pokemon. This is actually pretty cool. It being on stage two, I feel like is pretty balanced. We do have an Altaria with an attack that does that, but an ability is pretty insane. Um, unfortunately, we don't have anything like Scoop Up Net. Well, not unfortunately, Scoop Up Net was pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> but <clears throat> Scoop Up Net rotating is huge for the format and that's going to be huge for this card um so you can't just consistently reuse it and heal all the damage off um maybe if we get something like devolution spray or devolution spray z it could be very interesting to see but as of right now i want to put it in c tier slash it could c play but it's not quite there yet like I said, if we have a scoop up card or a de-evolving card to make this card be reusable, it would be pretty nuts. But would it be game breaking? That's my concern. Because if you have access to continuously reuse this Pokemon with a big HP Pokemon like an Arceus with a V Guard energy and a Radiant Guard of War, you wouldn't even have to play Sharon's at that point. You could just Arboliva and just Arbol Arboliva. Whatever. Comment in the comments section below. <laughs> Um, so this could actually be pretty cool in GLC. It is Torkoal for a fire and two colors. It does 80 times and you flip a coin for each fire energy it's attached. You do 80 times for each heads. Uh, in GLC, you do have access to the Pogo Charizard and you have access to Welder, which could be very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> it could have you, <laughs> you could honestly just stack a bunch of, uh, energies onto the Torkoal and have something like a Glenwood Tangle, maybe, to just flip a bunch of coins. Uh, and Expanded, I don't see this being popular in Standard. Uh, no. <laughs> but in GLC, it could be very, very interesting. Um... Armor Rouge has an ability where as often as you like during your turn, you may move a Fire Energy attached to one of your bench Pokemon to your active po Pokemon. Very similar to uh, Quagsire's Wash Off from Dragon's Majesty, where it just moves up all the Fire Energies, and you're like, okay, uh, I don't want to attack with this Pokemon. I want to attack with this one now, and it's kind of like a toolbox kind of thing. I feel like if we get something like um, Rainbow Energy, I feel like that'd be stupid good with this card, because uh, that's how it was with uh, my, my good friend Dart, um, we made a Mewtwo Quagsire box deck during a format. You can actually go check out the article on, uh, 60 cards, uh, that I ended up writing about it, but Rainbow Energy, Aurora Energy, or something that can be multiple energies at once could be very, very good. Um, as of right now, Fire doesn't have a, too much support to put it over the edge. It does have stuff like Rapidash and, uh, Rev of Room, which is coming out, uh, which I'm going to, um, talk about a little bit later. Um, but fire has been on the down low, especially with water being extremely prominent. 
uh, with Palkia and Articuno Control. Uh, so, I don't know. Armor Rouge is one of those cards where I feel like along the lines it could be very good. But it's just this place in the meta right now is just not it. So, we have the first EX of the set, and it's Gyarados EX. Um, Gyarados' terrestrialization mechanic is a can't take damage on the bench. I'm extremely disappointed at the way that they handled terrestrialization. It could have been so much cooler, but they did that. Uh, 300 HP stage one. The e a lot of the EXs do end up evolving from stage one, stage twos, which is pretty similar to what the, if not exactly what they were prior to 2012, uh, 2011 EXs. So I, I like it. It's a good balance. Um, three waters, you do 100, and for three waters and two colorless, you do 180 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon is, has any damage counters on it, you do 180 more, which means it does 360 damage for five energy. Now, notoriously, cards like this, where it does a large amount of damage for, or, uh, for, like, way too many energy, hasn't seen play. This could be very, very interesting, however, because a star portal plus a double turbo energy from a Palkia could be extremely viable. We also have access to a new Halucha, which is coming out, Gapejaw Bog, which is already a stadium card that's in the entirety of standard format, and Quick Shooting Inteleon, which is still legal, however, we do lose access to Drizzile. So there are ways to place damage counters, there are ways to make this work. The problem is consistently chaining it if that Gyarados goes down. Of course, you can make a tankier build with like Radiant Gardevoir and a, a, a Balava even like you could just heal all the damage off of it and keep one and just go but then you're losing consistency you're losing a way to damage your opponent you're putting a two prizer out that's more frail than the one you're actually having out so plus I believe the basic has 30 HP yeah, so if that gets sniped, you're pretty screwed. Um, Small of Elsa is like 30, 40 HP. So, I don't know. This could be very cool along the lines if there's something like a Deluge. But as of right now, I want to stick it in B tier because I don't think it's bad. I just don't think there's a good way to consistently get that damage rolling and setting it up. Like, consistent, I guess setting up the damage where being able to place it with... um. Halucha, even Agatha, because Agatha moves damage from you to your opponent, so you could damage yourself intentionally with Gate Jaw Bog and then Agatha. Um, so there are ways to do it. It's just consistently setting it up is the biggest problem. And after the first one gets knocked out, how do you set up the other one? Um, this float soul could be very interesting in GLC for two colors. So it does 50 plus 20 for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. I think there are a couple better Pokemon with Hydro Pump, but this is a very interesting Pokemon indeed for GLC. Um... Wug Trio could be very, very interesting for control slash mill, um, along the lines of it ever gets support. Uh, for three colorless, C tunneling flips three coins for each heads. Discard the top three of your opponent's deck. That is very good if you hit a bunch of heads. Milling in nine cards off of your opponent is nuts. Um, of course, everybody remembers the infamous Balalba Chinchino deck where it would mill pretty much six cards with Lieutenant Surge. Nine if you're using Mimikyu Impersonate to discard the Balalba from your hand and do it again. So it was a very deadly strategy. Wog Trio unfortunately falls victim to the fact that it's coin flip and also the fact that it's three colorless energy. However... If there is a triple acceleration or a good way to accelerate, and Palkia fans do not say Star Portal because you are not setting it up again, you can't Melanie to it. Um, <clears throat> it can get very interesting very quick. You could go something like Raihan and Double Turbo and set this thing up, but if you just flip two, three tails, your attack is essentially nullified. So unless there's a good way to reflip coins or guarantee a flip, I don't see Doug Trio seeing much play. But along the lines, it could be very, very good, or it could see play in a stall deck. And if they eventually stall, like lock something the active, Wog Trio could just come up and ruin your opponent's day. Um, <clears throat> Don Dozo for two colors does 50 times for each Tatsuguri in your discard pile. And Tatsuguri, uh, attaches two water energy from your deck to one of your basic Pokemon, I believe. Um, yep. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. You get Tatsuguri, 
Uh, sacrifice the Tatsuguri to do more damage with the um, uh, to Don Dozo. <clears throat> um, however, the damage cap at 200 is very, very, very scary. It doesn't one-shot anything. <laughs> Choice Belt Defiant Band could reach it up to 230, but the fact that things are 280 and higher is a bit annoying. Maybe there will be a Tatsuguri EX, but I don't see it applying to the same way that Don Dozo does, even if that was the case, because it's Tatsuguri, not Tatsuguri X. So, we'll just have to see. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Got a, a little bit disappointing, but because Don Dozo is actually a pretty cool Pokemon, so is the Tatsuguri, um, but we'll see. Gardevoir EX, probably the most talked about card before the set was even revealed. Gardevoir EX has an ability where as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a basic psychic Pokemon for a basic psychic energy to one of your psychic Pokemon. If you do, you put two damage counters on that Pokemon. Um, <clears throat> there are so many different cool things that you can do with Gardevoir EX. One of them is attacking with Zashi and V. Zashi and V from Celebration, so 60 plus 30 for each psychic energy attached to it. And you, at the when you go to end your turn... Or you use the ability and you end your turn, so you should act for a psychic energy attached to your board. Um, <clears throat> so you can make that thing do a ton of damage. Skystone allows you to take an extra prize card, which is a card coming out of Crown Zenith, which it's essentially your V-Star uh, power, but on a tool card that you could do on Vs and V-Stars. Uh, you may take an extra prize if your basic Pokemon knocks out a V-Star or V-Max. Um, so it's pretty interesting to swing the prize trade that way. So you could just have this big Zashi and V have like 20 HP left and just knock out everything in the game. You could have also, of course, used Weird Ear V to where you can attach a bunch of energies onto the board and then push it all up with Weird Ear. And even use Zamazenta V's ability or Zamazenta V Star's ability to give the Weird Ear 100 more HP. So it has 320 HP swinging for almost 400 damage because 10 energies on that thing is 400 damage so it's pretty insane to think about i think gardevoir is pretty good it has access to a, a water duplicates uh curlia in mirage step being able to search your deck for three curlias it also has access to Klefki slash um ralts combo ralts ha has teleportation being from i believe astral radiance um so we're just going to have to, or Silver Tuff is one of the two. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about Klefki when I, we actually get to that, because that card is pretty insane. The attack on this card, however, is pretty underwhelming. <laughs> but it's needed for such a broken attack. Uh, or such a broken ability. Um, Drifloon. Uh, for two psychic energy, you do 30 times 30 for each damage counter on this Pokemon. I don't think this is terrible if there is a way to boost HP on this thing, or a memory capsule comes back. Because thirty, because if you have a memory capsule attached to this thing and you have ten damage on it, because you are able to use Gardevoir, you stick damage counters onto the Drift Blim, um, and that does three hundred damage. Because three times ten is three hundred, <laughs> which is insane to think about on a one prizer. But of course, because we don't have memory capsule because it is rotating or Celebi Prisms, not Celebi Prism Star, Shining Celebi, I think is what I'm looking for. Uh, you're capped. And the cap is not very good with Drifloon. So it does 180 max. But this card, I wouldn't sleep on it if there is a way to boost the HP, like Cape of Toughness on this thing. Or if there is a way for Memory Capsule or Shining Celebi to come back, or even Shrine of Memories. So Drift Blim, however, is not so good. <laughs> A little bit of an intermission, trying to not give you the worst possible cards. This card could be interesting in GLC. I, I've seen a couple people talk about it on Twitter and even Standard. Uh, for a single Fighting Energy, this Lucario does 30 plus 120 if one of your Fighting Pokemon was knocked off from damage during your last turn, which is interesting but i think the damage output is extremely low um however one energy 150 is pretty insane it being a stage one though that's the biggest issue for me and the fact that it has to be a fighting pokemon to be to take that effect is kind of a little uh, is just kind of sad because you if you have set up pokemon um to where you can't actually access 
um, a full board of fighting Pokemon because there's not a lot of fighting support in the one in the fighting support that is out It's pretty decent, but they don't really have draw support So so to say you're playing rev of room be barrel or like uh, Luminion your opponent you just boss that up in Lucario's uh, second effect secondary effect of the attack is completely nullified And it just makes the guard really really bad, but in GLC everything is fighting so it could be very good um This Halucha is the one I was talking about with uh, Gyarados EX. So essentially, Halucha has an ability to, when it enters play onto the bench, you choose two of your opponent's best Pokemon and put one damage counter on each of them, which is really, really good. We've seen the power of Galarian Zigzagoon in this format to where that 10 damage makes the difference. However, the biggest thing about this card is it only hits benched Pokemon, so it doesn't hit active. So it gets a little weird. It gets a little sketchy. And of course, we don't have Scoop Up Net in format, but we have a supporter card called Penny coming out, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But I th I really, really like Halucha. I really like the way that they designed it. Being able to hit two bench Pokemon instead of having the one anywhere. It's just really, really good and really balanced. If we get something like Scoop Up Net reprinted, I can totally see this card being played a lot more. Um... Great Tusk is very interesting. I've seen a couple of people talk about it. For three fighting energy, you do 250. 250 is a lot of damage, especially on a basic Pokemon. Fighting Three fighting energy, though, is very, very awkward. You have to end up finding the three fighting energy, which I know there's a Coridon EX, which I believe attaches fighting from the deck or discard pile. And there's a Claydol from the new set at Silver Tempest, which attaches fighting energy from the discard pile on one of your Pokemon. But, of course, you have to have no supporter cards in the discard pile. So, with that in mind, Great Tusk could see some play. We have access to Grant and Choice Ball to reach up to the 310 mark. Uh, we have Halucha to potentially reach 320 on things that you end up uh, uh, bosses ordering up. So it's not the worst card in the world, but it's very interesting. And if it gets just a little bit more support, I know we have Gutsy Pickaxe, but we lose access to a Ranger Root. We don't have a smooth over effect to accelerate. It could be pretty, pretty decent, especially on a basic Pokemon that could do that by turn one, turn two. Uh, Karayon EX, speaking of it, once during your turn, you may attach two basic fighting energy cards from your discard pile to your basic fighting Pokemon any way you like. If you use this ability, your turn ends. So that's really one of your surefire ways to do this. I can imagine this with Deancey, actually. Deancey from Astro Radiance prevents supporter cards from affecting your bench Pokemon. So if you throw up a Klefki or Deancey and you leave it there, either abilities are getting locked or supporter cards are not going to be accessible. So they have to play Cross Switcher or Pokemon Catcher to get around you, which yes, Pokemon Catcher to get a reprint in the set so that could be pr a pretty easy way to set that oh you can't use clef because clef he actually can't solve basic pokemon so you can't use karina so it has to be the answer <laughs> so that could be a very very interesting way to set up the great tusk um however the cards do have to be in the, the energy cards do have to be in the discard pile so you have to find a way to get rid of them first but that's actually really really cool i didn't think about that um and then you attack for two fighting colors to under 20, and you can attack during your next turn. A little underwhelming, but of course, stuff like Grant can actually boost that damage. But Diancy, Karion, uh, Diancy, Karion, Great Dust might actually be that bad. Um, We have this Muck, which is pretty interesting. The special condition, uh, Poison, uh... What? The way that that's worded is really weird. The special condition, Poison, is not removed when your opponent's, uh... Evolves or devolves. So we saw something like this with, I believe, Sea of Nothingness, where no matter if they evolve, they don't, if it were, if they don't, if they do evolve, that they don't lose the special condition that's on them, which is interesting, but it never really came out big. It'd be more interesting if, per se, you hit the bench in the special condition still lasted, but. I mean, in a format full of evolutions, it could be pretty decent. Um, just we This thing is for retreat cost for one and two. The attack's not very good, and the ability is just mediocre at best. And we don't really have a good poisoning attack right now to where that could be beneficiary. Um, but speaking of poison, Toxicroak EX is probably one of my favorite cards in the set. Maybe not competitive-wise, but it's one of my favorite cards and one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Uh, Toxicroak EX for a single Dark Search deck for two, any two cards you want. Uh, think back into the Pokemon TCG. Nasty Plot has been around for a while, and it has barely seen play. It's all played with Foul Play Zorark back in 2011, which was pretty okay. Um, not really that good, though. However, for a Dark and Two Colors, you do 120 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now Poison, and you put six damage counters in between turns instead of one, which is 
insane to think about because if um something that you could do is you could go dark patch raihan attach radiant sneeze or choice belt so choice belt turns it to 150 Sneezer makes the poison 80 more so that means poison in between turns with the damage is going to be 230 damage which one shots v's and if they do not move that is another 80 damage coming their way being 310 knocking up v stars v maxes really anything and if you have access to halucha to hit that early it's pretty decent of course you also have access to double turbo energy you do lose the 20 extra damage which puts it to 210 it makes about 290 which is a little what weird but i think toxic could be very decent in the format right now in the fact that that's even accessible you have access to dark art v star so that you could pr bring up dark patches to reuse uh, toxic croak that way it's just pretty cool to see something like this and see poison finally getting some support uh outside of like hypnotoxic laser verbank back in the day but it's been years it's been pretty decent and i can't wait for this card and to see what could come of it um and here's rev of room Rev of Room is a stage one Pokemon where you discard an energy card from your hand in order to use the ability and you draw your hand to six. So it'd be Barrel get you five. You can do it. Um You know, you can do it if you have under five cards. Rev of Room is just discard an energy draw up until you have six. There's a school of it in the set that could be very interesting with this combination and it'd be barrel. But Rev of Room is pretty insane. It can pair with Volcarona Vita, hit a ton of numbers really, really quick. This could be another missing piece for some decks like Palkia, to where you need energies in the discard pile to use Star Portal and Greninja and Melanie. This could be a very, very good draw engine outside of the barrel engine. It has the same retreat cost. And the Rev of Room, I believe, attacks for Colos and Poisons. Yep. So this could this is a very interesting card. I really really like it, and in GLC it's really good because Metal has like no support in GLC right now for draw, which is really cool. Um, we're going to get into Oink Cologne EX. So I, I've seen quite a few people talk about Oink Cologne, whether it be good or bad. Oink Cologne for a single color, so that's ten plus thirty for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and for three colors, just two hundred ten flip coin if heads this Pokemon can't attack next turn. Um, I looked at this card and I thought this card was pretty bad, but the sheer factor of Having V-Guard Energy, Dunsparce Prevent Weakness, Sharon's Care, Cheryl, just all the nine yards of being able to heal this card because it has 260 HP on a stage one is pretty insane. Um, we do lose access to Powerful Colorless Energy, but I don't really think you need that when you're just sitting there and you're like, boink, you know? So, it's, it's a very, very interesting card to say the least. Will it see competitive play? I don't know. Maybe, maybe the format's too fast for it. Maybe it's way. Maybe it's not too tanky. But I don't know. V Guard Energy plus uh, Radiant Guard Form makes it have 310 HP. So it could be a very, very, very interesting card to see shape in the metagame moving forward into post rotation. Palpad and Nest Ball both get reprints. I'm very happy about both of them. Um, Rock Chest Blade is a trainer card where your fighting Pokemon take 30 less damage from attack. Um, so this could do decently with Great Tusk, and you just use Grant to do your damage buffer. Um, I don't know. I mean, it could be okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, all Pokemon tools are now Pokemon tools now. If you read the card, it is no longer an item card, so stuff like Pokestop and Celebration's View no longer works with it. And Arvin is going to be a new supporter card that's going to be pretty crucial for getting these cards out. EXP Share gets a reprint, okay? Defiant Band. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, uh, the attack to your Pokemon do third more damage. Uh, this is very reminiscent of a card back in like 2004, 2005, if I remember correctly. I can't remember where the card is off the top of my head, but it did something similar, but I believe it was like 10 or 20 damage boost. So this card, I think, is really, really cool. I think it's, I think it could sneak as a one or two of in some decks. It just as like, okay, I play Choice Spell for this situation, but I also play Defiant Band if I'm behind. Stuff like Benet EX could run something like this because you're probably going to be behind while you're locking your opponent. Uh, Team Star Grunt is another interesting card. Point energy card uh, attached to your opponent's active Pokemon on, uh, on top of the deck. Um, unfortunately, this is very weak compared to, like, Yell Grunt, Flare Grunt. But putting it on top of your opponent's deck could be very interesting, especially paired with Wug Trio, because you could end up discarding the card. But I'd much personally rather have Flare Grunt. <laughs> Research gets another reprint. Penny is the supporter card I was talking about a little bit earlier. Return one of your basic Pokemon in all. All cards attached to it in playback in your hand, which is 
insane. <laughs> AZ picked up anything on your board, but it had to discard the cards. Acerola picked up any Pokemon, but it was only it had to have a damage counter. Penny picks up basic Pokemon for little to nothing. <laughs> and you get every single card back, which is really, really cool. I think this card is very, very good. Will it sneak into decks as a one of? Maybe. If you play Luminion, you could just immediately eliminate that off your board. But you could use the Volo logic to where Volo sees little to no play. But Penny can reuse... Uh, Penny can get the Pokemon back in your hand as opposed to discarding, so you don't need to fish it back out. So that's the one benefit that Penny has over Volo. Uh, Beach Court is a very good stadium card to where it's very reminiscent of Skyro Bridge. The retreat cost of each player's basic Pokemon is one colorless. Uh, less, I think it's very, very good for keeping Lost Box. Pretty relevant. Uh, it loses Scoop Up Net and Air Balloon, which I don't believe many lost box decks were playing balloon but i know a lot of lost box decks were playing scoop up net even and occasionally on a, a bird keeper um so having beach court is very very good for the deck and having a way around just degenerate stadium cards that may stop you from being able to play the game um we have Spide Up CX, which is interesting. The ability is your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost is a colorless more. So it could pair well, very well with Leafeon VMAX, where it does 60 times for each retreat cost and your opponent's active. Of course, we lose Galar Mine, but Spide Up's does stack. So if you have four Spide Up's in play, your opponent has four retreat, and Leafeon is doing 60 times. If they already have two retreat costs already on the card, that's 360 damage. You can play Drapion from you. So it may not be the worst thing in the world, but I... I think it's very, very underwhelming, and I personally think the Pokemon is very ugly. <laughs> um, he's super high, y'all. Uh, we have Arcanine EX, which is another EX card. Uh, same thing as the Gyarados, where uh, I can't take damage on the bench. For two fire energy, it does 30 plus 10 for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Pretty interesting, as 280 HP, V-Guard plus uh, Radiant Guardi allows it to have 330. Um... Or not not have more HP, but essentially take that would take 50 damage less to where it essentially has X amount of HP by the end of it. Um, the unfortunate part is I don't think there's a good way to place damage counters on this Pokemon aside from Magma Basin. I mean, you could swing into it, but then you're at like a liability risk for having a stage one just potentially hit for little to nothing. You have to have 250 damage on you in order to one-shot V-Stars, which is really, really bad, especially in a one-shot format. Um, 250 damage, though, for discard two fire energy attached to this Pokemon. This is where, I guess, the Cerule Edge could come into play to where you could Magma Base it and then attach and just push up the energy back into the active and just swing. So, could be interesting. I think it's very, very underwhelming, though, especially with fire having little support. But it does, you can, I believe, use Rapidash, unless Rapidash is the only basic fire Pokemon, like Volcanium was. I don't know. Love to see. Um, I I think I looked at the slow bro a little bit. As often as you like during your stream, move a damage counter from one of your Pokemon to this Pokemon. So if you have uh, multiple slow bro in play, um, you could move. If you have four slow bro in play for some reason, you could essentially move off um, two hundred and. 280 damage off your board and then go Cheryl and heal everything off your board which is pretty insane but the problem is it is a bench liability as three retreat in a format to where we don't have access to float stone or stand in or air balloon we just have access to switch in that beach court and I don't really know what wouldn't be getting one shot in this format I know I guess this could pair well with oint cologne to where you can heal the damage off but you also have access to Sharon's um, could pair well with just some random, I, I don't know, I'll be real with you, it, <laughs> it, it could be decent, it could be bad, but three retreat scares me, so this is a very interesting card to say the least. Um, so Titan should have gotten any eggs. They did my dude dirty. Magnezonia X, 330 HP it, for a single lightning does 50 times for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Pretty okay. For two lightning, it does 220 and 30 to itself. Unfortunately, 220 is a little bit low, especially in a stage two. You have to go rare candy, attach turn one, and then attach turn two. Um, So it's pretty okay, but it's, like I said, very underwhelming. Energy Crush has always been one of those attacks where it's like it's either seen widespread play or it's seen mediocre French play that's ended up coming in clutch at some point in time. So we'll just have to see uh, how Magnezonia X ends up shaping. 
Um, Pachirisu is this Pokemon can't be paralyzed. I don't think it's very good. However, the attack, this attack does 20 plus 20 for each benched lightning Pokemon. Um, I mean, cool. Max 110 damage for one prizer for two energy. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just an Articuno counter. Junk could be interesting. Um... Tetris City is also very interesting for two colorless. You choose two cards from your opponent's hand without looking, and then you shuffle them back into their deck. So if you can get them with, like, a Rock, Sand, and Toxtricity in the same turn, you can just completely screw over your opponent and give them zero cards. Um, the very unfortunate part is you can actually do that turn two with some, like, Damage Pump, Mew, Gengar shenanigans I've seen running around. However, if they draw out of it, you lose. <laughs> if you don't have a good way to mill your deck, you lose. Or mill their deck, you lose. Um, Maraid on the X, probably one of the best cards coming out of the set. Uh, the ability Tandem Unit is once during your turn, you may search your deck for two basic lightning Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Your turn does not end, however. And for two lightning at a close, it's 220, and this Pokemon can detect during your next turn. This card is nuts with the Electricity Generator card, which I'm going to be talking about a little bit later. And having synergy with being able to get out Mareeps a lot easier, which was the biggest issue for that deck, just having that consistency of not being able to con uh, not being able to get out multiple Mareeps at once. But all it takes is an Ultra Ball, Capturing Aroma, Pokeball, Great Ball, like any search card in the entire format in order to get this card out. Uh, however, you can't use it when that's ball. So just keep that in mind. Um, Bonetti X. Bonetti X for a single psychic energy does 30 and your opponent's active pull, or your opponent can't play an item cards during the next turn. Item lock has always been very good. Vikaville is a tier one deck as of right now and one San Diego Regional Championship. However, that does 50 damage and it's on a basic Pokemon, so you could essentially do a turn one if you really could. But however, there is the Shuppet allows you to do it off of a coin flip and 10 damage, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then for two, a psychic on a colorless does 60 damage uh, for each of your opponent's trainer card in hand. Um, so I think there's some synergy behind this with something somewhere. I think you could do something with Irida and Inteleon to go rare candy quick shooting. There's some interesting uh, Gardevoir. So you could have like item lock, item lock while you set up your Gardevoir pieces in the back and come in and swing with like Zacian or Weirdeer or even Poltergeist, a big 2-3 prizer. Um, there's of course the Radiant Alakazam strategy. There is Halukja running around with it. It's there, There's a couple ways you could play this. Just I don't know if it's the time for it quite yet. The damage output is just very low. Flora just has an ability where as long as this Pokemon is in play, your Pokemon have no weakness. Pretty interesting. You could dream ball it out. Clef Key is that Pokemon I was talking about earlier. Uh, as long as this Pokemon is in your active spot, each player's basic Pokemon have no abilities. It's it's ex it's exactly like Bide Barricade. <laughs> it's literally just Bide Barricade Wobbuffet. Of course, it does limit it to Bench Pokemon, which I think is extremely fair. I think basic Pokemon abilities are absolutely nuts right now. It needs to be slowed down in this format. Having Clef Key is very, very healthy for the game. However, I do hate the card itself. Because if I play against it, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> so, I think the card is very good, very balanced. It can be a Fog Crystal target. Um, so, yeah. I think Annihilate could be cool. I don't know where. I know GLC could be very interesting because they play a lot of stage twos. But it does 70 times 70 for each prize card your opponent has already taken for a single fighting. So it could be very, very cool. But in current standard, unless you do like some Zoroark shenanigans and your opponent goes down by like four or five prize cards, you're not really hitting that much damage. Um, so I don't know. Annihilate could be good in GLC. Um, Bostiff is pretty interesting. It has a one-way escape rope effect where once during your turn, you may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of the bench Pokemon. I think this is very interesting, to say the least. I don't think it's broken. I don't think it's bad. Because, like, a one-way escape rope is also is always very good. It could disrupt your opponent in many ways of forcing them to have a switching card every single time. It could stall you a turn. Like, it's... It's cool. <laughs> I 
Iron Treads at EX for three colors to do 30 damage to three of your opponent's Pokemon. So unless you get this card, unless you get this rolling turn one against something like Smoliv for some reason, if somebody's playing that right now or anything that's 30 or less HP, uh, Triple Laser doesn't do anything. Of course, back then Registeel saw some very, very fringe play to beat Night March. Myself included used it and expanded against Night March. Um, and then for three metal and a colorless, geez, it does 160 and switches Pokemon with 20 bench, so you can switch on a Klefki, it's okay. When I was 64, though, that is not okay, especially because we lose Metal Saucer. Um, once during your trimmy, you heal all special condition from your active Pokemon. That could be probably the best Articuno counter, because it's just consistent every turn, and you can't stop that thing. <laughs> so you don't need to play, like, weird cards, of course. Oh, it's two retreat. That's one of the cheaper retreat costs I've seen on Blissey. Huh. That might not actually be that bad as, like, a like special condition counter. Uh, Squovit is the basic Pokemon I was talking about earlier. Heidi Hole is the ability. Once during your turn, you may shuffle your hand and return the cards at the bottom of your deck without looking and then draw a card. This could be very good in case you break your hand with B-Barrel and then you throw everything at the bottom, draw one card, and draw more with B-Barrel. You could pair this well with Tempting Tune Altaria to where you could search your deck for a supporter card, put it on top, throw the rest on the bottom, and play, like, Sickle Strike Mustard or Rapid Strike Mustard or whatever and get the entire combo going. So I think it's very, very interesting. Unfortunately, it does take a bench slot. But I think it's a really, really cool concept, and I really like it for the game. Um, I think Indeedy is also really cool. I don't know if it's going to see play, but Indeedy for a single colorless, you, you search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon in play and put it on that Pokemon to evolve it. So it's universal uh, evolution search, especially on going second. That could be very, very good in some cases. Um, however, it's just very underwhelming. This It's just underwhelming. 90 HP though. One retreat, one attack, cause. Tana Mouse is another interesting card. I know one of my uh, teammates, Nate, was testing this. Uh, for two colors, but 70 times for each mouse hold in play, you can only have four in play at a single time. Uh, if you are attacking with this thing, it does include itself. However, you can play Zoroark from Evolving Skies, but you do lose two energy. So 280 damage goes to 260 damage, and it makes the damage output a lot lower. Um, you also have to not prize these things. <laughs> they are not Heavy Ball searchable, or they are not Heavy Ball grabbable. So you cannot just be like, well, yeah, I prized one. <laughs> if, it, if it was Tandem Mouse... You could mouse hold no, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Um, electricity generator. You may look at the top five cards of your deck and choose two basic lightning energies and attach them to your bench lightning Pokemon that way you like. I really, really like this card. Um, it's like Max Elixir. Max Elixir has always been very good since it was released. Uh, electricity generator is just what electric uh, decks needed in order to function. Of course, it is a it is a very risky chance, but you just play a lot more lightning energy. You can do some cute things with Turn 1 Maridon. Pikachu of Union could actually start seeing play, which is really interesting to think about. So, yeah. Ultra Bug gets a reprint. Uh, Rare Candy gets a reprint. Rocky Helmet gets a reprint for some reason. KD is an interesting card, I think, for stall. One, uh, using this card ends your turn. Shuffle your hand in your deck and draw 8. Um, judges in format, so it's very scary. Marnie does rotate, however, so that's a big up. If your opponent doesn't have access to Judge, I think this card is very good. Um, in Control especially, uh, because Control lost Gorman dies, so they lose a huge draw card out of that. Um, so I don't know. Maybe KD could be good, maybe KD could be bad. Arvin searches your deck for an M card and a tool card. Very interesting, very good in Mew. Obviously, you search your deck for four seal stone and a power tablet and get any two cards you want. Everything else could be pretty fringe. Miriam, which is, um... Iona's dad, Iona's, whatever, whatever that, or mom, mom, oh my god, I'm getting canceled, <laughs> you chase five Pokemon cards from your discard pile, reveal them and shuffle them in your deck and draw three cards, I really, really like this effect, if you don't have a, if you don't have Pokemon cards in your discard pile, you draw three cards, it's just really cool, um, it's essentially hop, but, like, <laughs> if, if you don't use this full effect, it is a hop, so, I like cards that always have, like, some guaranteed effect. So, if you don't end up having Pokemon in your discard pile, you just immediately are like, okay, I'm going to draw a card so I can, you know, get around this anyways. So, I really, really like this card. We've needed something to get back Pokemon for a minute that wasn't in the form of Ordinary Rod, especially in large quantities, and Miriam is really good at doing that. And the last card from the set is Meza Goza. Uh, Meza Goza is once during your turn, uh, you may flip a coin. If heads, that player searches your deck for a Pokemon and puts it in your hand. I love this card. This card is pretty decent. It could help V Unions be good because this actually searches for V Union Pokemon. Um, 
So you could go like V Union, discard with Curlia, discard with any other car that you could potentially need. Uh, it could help consistency wise, being able to search out for other Pokemon. Um, of course, it's a coin flip, so like it's not guaranteed, but this card is really good when you do hit heads. I really like the Stadium card. I don't know what to fit it in other than the V Union decks as of right now, but we'll just have to see it. Um, aside from that, my conclusive thoughts is the set is pretty mid. I think a lot of the cards in the set are very good and well balanced. Some of these cards have needed to exist for a while, and I cannot wait for post rotation. I thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and like for more content. If you want to see more decks or post rotation decks, drop it in the comment section below on what you actually want to see. If you want to see Oink Clone, maybe, Garrett OCX, or even something with our Bolivar, whatever. Um, just be sure to click that subscribe button, otherwise your Mr. Beast Bars will go missing in your room whenever you go to work. Goodbye!